Hey guys, welcome to the shop. So in today's video, we're actually not covering this style of micrometer. We're, in, we're covering what is called an interchangeable anvil micrometer, or a unimic. Now I wanted to show you just a simple, simple, plain old standard style of micrometer. And we're going to show you a depth micrometer a little bit later. But I wanted to show you a couple of situations where unimic actually comes in really handy and is a little bit more user friendly than a standard outside micrometer. And now the first one is there can be situations where you're boring for a wall thickness. Now, why would you do that? You know, most of the time it's your inside and outside dimensions, you know, there are times when say, if you're pressing this in as a bushing, it's going to shrink. Um, and you know, your interior dimension kind of doesn't matter. And also measuring the wall thickness a few different places actually does give you a good idea of concentricity of the inside and the outsides without um, more complex inspection. So we'll just show you that first. Uh, you know, normally what you'd have to do to measure the wall thickness on this is take an outside measurement and then use what's called a snap gauge and snap the inside and then you'd measure this on an outside micrometer like so. We're not going to do that. I think snap gauges deserve their own video. So this micrometer skips steps because all I've got to do is take the measurement. So we're reading this as 100 plus 25 50, 75, 75 plus 18, 75 plus 8, 83, so 93, so 193 thousandths of an inch. Um, we're going to repeat that in the same location in case I misread it. So, you know, what we are showing here is a lack of repeatability, I think, due to dirt. So yeah, we have a lot of dirt. So right now we're reading 75 plus 13, so 88. I'm gonna repeat that one more time. Seventy-five plus thirteen five, okay, half a thousandth. Um, these are really sensitive to how you hold them on the part because right now I have a rod in here. We're gonna show you the interchangeable part in a moment. Uh, but this is pretty fast to just measure a wall thickness. You know, here we have, we're reading 15, that's unfortunate. Um, gonna repeat the measurement. Reading 15 again. So I think part of it too is what we can do is lock this. There is a lock on these. I tend not to use it. Um, I think on this micrometer, you're a little bit forced to uh, just because it's so new um, and smooth. It keeps spinning a little bit. See that? A little irritating, but c'est la vie. Um, it is life. So the interchangeable part of this micrometer comes from this thumb screw here. Now I can now remove the measuring rod. It's just a hardened steel rod. And we can put in this little tabby do here. And this is another anvil. So this is a good example of, say I had an O-ring groove on the end of the part grooved in here. If I have anything with an O-ring groove I can use to demonstrate. Well, I think we can use this T-nut here. Uh, same principle. So this gives me a way to measure into the T-nut it's easier when I do it on camera, guys. So 
So that is measuring 337 thousandths. So not quite three eighths. Close. You know, it's a T-nut. Precision is not the end of the world. So, you know, we have an interchangeable anvil here. Now, one of the cool things you can do with this is the whole anvil retaining assembly can be removed. See, so this has a spring retainer and it just threads into the, hand, the knob here. So what we can do on our little surface plate is we can use this as a pseudo depth micrometer. Now this has its uses, but you know, it's not really like, you need one of these around the shop? No, frankly, I kind of impulse purchased this just because it was really cool and I wanted one, I didn't need it. Now what you can see here is we're a few ten thousandths of an inch off. About five ten thousandths of an inch off. Now that's just because every time you change anvils on this, you have to re-zero it, uh, which is a little annoying, but not a big deal. Now for that same job, we could use a depth micrometer like this guy. So same story, we're a few tenths off. Few, um, I have a really hard time calibrating depth micrometers. So for certain times and certain places, it's a little more convenient to use a uni mic. Like I really do think that in this situation, measuring something like this, this is just so much more user friendly than balancing a depth mic. So I think these are common in die makers and some specialty shops where you're doing really kind of goofy measurements all the time in hard to reach places like the wall thickness is a good example. The you know, steps where it can be hard on a normal mic. Where are we? Yeah, I have a normal mic. This is just a stare at Oh, 231, really old, seen better days, but it's still plenty accurate. So sometimes this is a little less, um, a little less accurate. You know, I'm reading within a thousandth of an inch, which a lot of that comes down to on these parts with a really bad surface finish like this. You know, we've got a bad surface finish and corrosion on it. I'm not really gonna question being within a one or two thousandths of an inch just because I know there's stuff on there and I could be hitting a burr, not gonna worry about it. So really what the Unimic is, is if you're doing small parts a lot. I think this would be kind of a cool tool to have for uh, quote unquote model engineering. Like I know in the near future, I have a sort of steam engine project I'm going to be starting and documenting on the channel. I don't know what measuring tools I'll be using for that, but I thought it would be interesting to kind of cover a few different measuring tools and their applications just so that, you know, we can learn some more as a, a viewer base. It's depth micrometers are really cool. I use them a lot. I do think if you're getting started, like a zero to one micrometer does probably 90% of the work you need done. Um, gauge blocks aren't strictly necessary. I think a lot of the specialty micrometers aren't really relevant. And I think in our next 
specialty micrometer video will do. We will cover the depth mic. And at some point I would like to cover this Sterrett inside micrometer set. It's, they're all really interesting tools and there's a lot to, there's a lot to use in a lot of ways you can use them. I know um, in gunsmithing work, you can use a depth micrometer to set your uh, barrel headspace, your chamber depth. And that's fairly intuitive once you understand how to use a depth mic. But I'm gonna reassemble my Unimic and I'm gonna show you how to zero it because it's pretty straightforward and it really does zero like any other micrometer. It's just, these aren't, they're repeatable, but they're also not. So I always find I'm off by at least a few ten thousandths of an inch, sometimes more. So let's see how far off we are. So we're actually off by a whopping seven ten thousandths of an inch, or three ten thousandths of an inch, we're reading under. So this is cool. I think I really like that Mitutoyo does this. Um, I like to lock them, but you get a really nice wrench and you just crank until it lines up. And there we are, a zeroed micrometer. Does it repeat? And it repeats. So that's a Unimic, just giving you an idea of a couple of different ways to use them. I, again, I really don't think you need these in your shop. I think they're fun to have, they're cool to have, they're nice little conversation pieces, but you don't need them. I just want it because it saves me time and saves me some frustration. And if it is something you can afford as a hobbyist, absolutely go out and buy one. They're cool to have. You know, would you buy one as a shop owner? Maybe, but you don't need to. So thanks for watching, guys.